Hi there, this is Craig Stevens and we are the Change Mentors. We come together to talk about interesting subject and subjects and today the subject is on values and culture and ethics and morals and those kind of things. There's three of us, I'm Craig Stevens and I'm your host today and we're gonna turn it over to uh, Pat. Pat, tell, introduce yourself, Pat. Okay, great, thank you so much. Well, I am Patricia Leonard and I am also a change mentor. I have been my whole life, my background, human resources. So I had a lot of opportunities to do that. And I'm very excited about the topic that we're talking about today because it is so critical to the human resource and the way an organization works and the way leaders lead an organization to create the culture we want. So it's going to be a very exciting exciting subject on values, ethics, and culture, and I'm excited. Anne, could you tell us a little bit about you? <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Uh, hi, I'm Ann Jagger, and I too am a change mentor, and I come at it from a different perspective. I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I have been living change my entire life, and today I'm going to share with you an ethical dilemma that I ran across and one of my business ventures. But it, until that time, I'm gonna turn it back over to Craig <laughs> because we need to have some visuals before we move forward. Yes. Very good. And so what was really interesting about what we just did, we have Anne from the human factors point of view, the human um, resources point of view. We had Anne, I said, I said Pat, right? So Pat from human, fa human relations. And I, th I think human factors, because that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the engineering side. And Anne's got a very good head related to the business side. And she's been in many businesses and started many companies. And I'm coming from more of a technical side. And you'll notice by my pictures that I'm going to show as I set it up that we got three different perspectives. So I'm going to share this screen real quick. And this is just gonna let you see how it all fits together, move our faces out of the way. And so if we were to think about a business, then what we really have is we have a whole system approach of things going on. And in this middle of the system is what I like to call the engine of change. It's seven attributes, they're in balance, and it draws a picture of a mobile. Well, the cable that holds everything up, if you cut this cable, everything falls apart. That cable is called culture. Leadership drives culture. Everything else relies on culture. So if I were to draw a picture of what culture is, then that cable can be divided up into cabling's or different cables that are wrapped together. And so if we were an archaeologist, we'd probably focus on these yellow boxes, these yellow circles, these yellow cables. But today we're going to look straight into the middle, deep into the cable of culture and the values of your organization drives the culture of your organization. So when we talk about values, we're talking about the values, the morals, the ethics, those kind of subjects. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this screen off and bring it back to Pat. And Patricia, you have a lot of thoughts related to ethics and the cable of, or the culture and how that fits with uh, moral issues and the values and those kind of things. Could you explain what you explained to Ann and I earlier? That was very good. Well, um, I was doing some research. I was thinking about my own life as a human resource uh, professional and a business owner. And I did some research to find out because I had my own perceptions of what values and morals and ethics in business were about. And I thought, how do, how do they work together or how don't they? And there is a difference. And sometimes it seems like a subtle difference, but it can really make a difference in you choosing the corporation you want to be in and how you lead that organization. So um, as, when I was doing my research, it says that morals refer mainly to guiding principles. Like in our environment, when we grew up, we had some values and morals that we lived by. And those were the things that our parents taught us, our teachers taught us. So we take those with us as we mature into adults. 
And in the research, it said that ethics refer more to specific rules or actions that maybe a company has a mission statement or maybe they have operating procedures that they expect people to live within dress codes. You can see all of that now in play in our business businesses. So how do those play out sometimes in businesses? For instance, um, moral values shape a person's way of being in the corporation. So for a leader, their own morals, uh, sometimes, well, it's a way they lead other people. And sometimes it can be in conflict with the way the organization has set up guiding principles. And those are the kind of things that we have to start thinking about is, as a leader or as an employee, where do I have a little bit of subtle differences? And I'll give you some examples. A moral person wants to do the right thing and an ethical person wants to work within the guidelines of the organization. So sometimes there can be a, a little bit of a conflict in there. Ethics aren't always moral. And this was one thing that I thought was very interesting. For instance, if you think about um, the mafia, I know that's not exactly, but I just want to give you some drastic example. It's a code of silence about how it is you work here. And people know what that code is. And so they operate within that sometimes. And the person that I was doing some research was a lawyer. And he was talking about that sometimes you're representing someone that you might have to say they're guilty, even though you in your heart, you know that, but even though you have to work within the guidelines or the ethical code of the organization or the lawyer um, uh, uh, commitment that you made. So you can see how these things start to, he said, a lawyer who tells the court that his client is guilty may be acting out of moral desire instead of the ethical desire that says, I won't talk about my client at all. We don't say anything here. So I think the way it plays out in corporations is that the culture is impacted by that, the way we feel. And Anne's going to be tell us a, a, about a situation where she actually faced some ethical kind of um, situations in a corporation and I did too. I'm going to tell one quick story and then I'm going to turn it over to Anne. I was on a business trip one time and I had a gentleman that uh, we had a meeting and afterwards he said, would you like to come to um, my room and we'll have a glass of wine before we retire? And so I um, thought about it one second and I said, you know, it's late and we have a busy day tomorrow. So I think that I would just rather go ahead and turn in. And as I walked to my room, I thought I'm a single mom with one son and I wonder what this is going to do to my career. However, uh, it worked out good. And let me tell you the end of this story. Five years later, I was struggling in this same organization with a career uh, decision that the company was making about me. And um, he called me in his office. He happened to be senior level. He called me in his office and he said, I want to tell you something that I think if you don't have a place to go in the corporation when all the dust settles, he said, I've got an opening for you. So the thing is, I, was, I respected who I was and I thought in the end, he respected who I was. So I think sometimes it can come in conflict, but I think we have to look at who are we and maybe that's not the company to be. But in the long run, I ended up choosing the way I believe morally and, um, and moved on with it and it paid off. So I think those are the things that culture sometimes uh, create for us are those dilemmas and then we have to look within that organization to see or within ourselves to see um, how that impacts in that moment. Okay, 
And you want to tell your, I, I'm anxious to hear your story about the um, situation that you might have faced in a corporation. Sure. <laughs> well, thank you, Patricia. My situation took place when I first moved to North Carolina. I was not involved in my own business at the time. I was working for someone else. And we grew that business to a point where a public company bought us. Part of that agreement was that the owners would leave and I would stay on for two years to help transition everything over. And I became the Southeastern controller of the corporation. We started working and I started seeing things that I didn't like that were happening in the company that really were going against what I believed to be the right thing to do. And I, I verbalized it. Well, I was told I was going to be given a raise and I was going to be made interim CEO. And I said, that's not changing my mind with what I just told you. Well, what happened at that point is they came down on me and told me, we have sales in the pipeline and I need you to put it on the books. And I said, no, we don't have contracts. I won't. And they said, yes, you will. And I said, no, I won't. That's not right. And because they were a public company, they had shareholders to report to. And that was their way of keeping everything, you know, copacetic. And I said, I'm not doing it. Well, they took that position away from me and left me as interim CEO. And someone else took care of the books after that. Then they told me I had to lay off people. We had 125 employees at the time. I was told to lay off 25 of them. I did that and it broke my heart and I did not let anybody else do it. I did it myself. And I knew those people personally. Four weeks later, I was told that I had to absorb five executives from other parts of the country into our business. And I had to, I had to, lay off 30 more people. Wow. I said, we have too many chiefs. We need Indians. We need the workers. You're destroying the business. And they kept telling me, no, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. And I said, you're doing wrong by these people. And what I wound up by doing is seeing that they were cooking the books and seeing all these other things that they were doing to people and trying to drive them out of the corporation. And I said, I've had enough. So what I did is I told them, the only layoff I'm doing is my own. And I laid myself off. I said, you can handle the rest of them. I just could not deal with it anymore. And I, as, as luck would have it, and I say this in, in a nice way, uh, some of those people went to prison. The Exchange Commission came in and shut the whole corporation down and within a year everything was gone. Wow. So their ethics were not in line with mine first of all because we ran our business very differently than they did and my morals would not let me continue down their ethical path that they had set for me. I just wouldn't do it so I wound up losing a very lucrative position like you, you, you never know what's going to happen. But as luck would have it, I had an opportunity to start another business. And that was the best thing I could have ever done for myself. Yeah, there's, all right? all kinds of, there's all kinds of stories like that. But Pat, did you have another story you said? Or did you tell, did you tell all you wanted to say, Patricia? That was basically it. Thank all right. You. Well, so what I'm thinking a lot of times, the first thing that comes to mind is anybody will lie for you will lie to you. And so as a leader of a company, what you have to do is you have to create an ethical, uh, and as you would say, Pat, a, a values oriented culture so that, that people are comfortable telling the truth and they're uncomfortable doing anything but that. 
And if they tell you the truth and you're able, your performance measures and your metrics work and everything else works, but the moment they start lying, the moment they start covering, and the moment you start using that performance measures as punishment, that's when your company will suffer the most. And so just always remember, anybody will lie for you, anybody that you can convince to lie for you, you should fire because they will lie to you. They're, it shows that they're unethical. It shows that they're immoral and everything else. And the other thought is throughout the whole world, there's, or, there's standards, moral standards and value standards in that part of the world. So some places, uh, and you probably can think of several of these, the values are such that it holds everything up. It holds you accountable. The people are honest in that area. And you would, uh, your, your pressure is to do the right thing. And there are other places in the world, and you can probably think of some of those too, where it's the exact opposite. The pressure is pushing you down, pushing your ethics down, mm -hmm. pushing the morals down. And so if you have a, a ability to locate and your business, in some part of the world or some part of the United States, pick those areas that is, is trying to do the right thing and is leading you to the right thing. Pick the people you hang around with, the parties you vote for, whatever it is, pick the people who are ethically, morally trying to get to the right answers and in the right way. And I think that's a good picture. Think of a giant thumb coming down on your people. And that thumb is the performance measures and everything else. You want people not to treat them, not to punish them, but to get them where they feel like they can make mistakes, they can tell you the truth, and they can uh, do the right thing without being punished. And that's what I think the moral of that lesson is. In your organization, the culture is viewed by the people, by their direct supervisor. So you may have the best ethics, the best morals, and the best values in the world through the top uh, part of the company, but unless that direct supervisor follows that, everybody under them thinks that you're an immoral company or, or your culture is bad. So that's another connection from the leadership. Anybody want to say anything else or anybody agree with or disagree with that? You know, yeah, Craig, <laughs> as you were talking, I was thinking about a situation as a coach that I faced here in Nashville. There was a gentleman that I was working with and he was let go from an organization. They told me why he was let go and it was a conflict of his value system and the business environment, the culture. He, um, he took his Bible to work every day and, and a leader told me why. And so I coached this gentleman directly that he had, he didn't have to give up his belief in whatever he believed in, but he could not put it on someone else. And so um, he would sort of preach in his um, work environment. And if anybody stepped outside his boundaries, his value system and moral boundaries, he was struggling with that and was trying to, to um, encourage others to believe the way he believed. And I told him, these are the reasons you let go. It doesn't mean you have to give up your values. And I think in an organization and the culture, like you were saying, we are a global society now. So everybody is bringing different understandings that they grew up with in different cultural environments, not just in the United States, but, um, and he was from another country, by the way, but um, he, he said, you know what, I understand and it's going to be hard. And I said, well, you have to decide, either choose a company that that's okay in, or you're going to have to find another profession because uh, maybe in your preaching profession or whatever. So I did see where we can, um, we have to look at the culture of the organization and the ethics, the, the guiding principles that guide that organization when we're thinking about, and I think that's tough for leadership sometimes too, because they liked him, they liked him as a human being, just like Anne was, but it was again, you know, they had to stay within the guiding principles of the company and he didn't fit. 
Now, it didn't mean that he wasn't going to find a job any place. It just means that he had to rethink where he was going to be working and how he behaved. So I think sometimes, just like my story and Ann's story, we don't have to get up who we are, but we have to respect the ethics and the guiding principles of that company and work within that. And I think both of us gave examples and he was able to get a good job and he did appreciate, but you just have to be honest sometimes with yourself about uh, things like that. So I thought that fit because leadership wanted to help him, but sometimes people, um, their, their uh, morals, their values are so strong that they it's struggle for them. And I think, um, this guy talked about five levels of ethical culture in business. And I like this a lot, This um, some research I did. He says it's at the individual level, and I just gave you a story about that. He said another level is the interpersonal, us talking back and forth like this gentleman was doing with his coworkers. And then the group dynamics. If one group is not performing, and ethically the way the company should, then that impacts the whole organization. So my group may be ethical within the guidelines, but another group may not. So he was talking about all this and it moves to the top, the senior level. If they're not, and just like Ann was saying in her story, if they're not, then that's going to impact the success of the company and maybe their future lives, Ann. Very good. And you got anything else? I had a couple of thoughts based on what what you just said, and that is that's a two-edged sword too. Because I remember uh, over time the Overton window, you know, the values change over time, right? And so the Overton window yes. kind of goes like a pendulum. So what you think is right, some things are outside of that window, but sometimes it shifts over, and and picks that up. So when I first started working, it was common to hear just the filthiest jokes, you know, and, and I mean, I still have that some of those jokes burned into my skull, <laughs> my brain, just because it's hard to not think of things that are like that. And so, but the Overton window has switched so that that is unacceptable and that Overton window will keep switching, you know, over time. And sometimes it'll come back, but, um, so there's all kinds of things that are ethical now that didn't used to be ethical and vice That's versa. Right. And uh, let's see, uh, uh, the, another thought, I may have forgotten about it, but I we all have lots of stories. So I remember stories uh, in related to that. Uh, one story I remember was the president of a company was having an affair with the vice president and everybody in the company knew it except for the vice president. And, and, you know, and, and it's just like the secrecy that goes around those kind of things. And some people know, and some people don't know. And it's just, you know, it hurts real people. There's real people that get, that struggle in these environments. So it, it just, you just never know, but it's always important to do the right thing. And, and the culture is what, you know, keeps your company going and keeps it from going bankrupt for stupid reasons and yes. other things. Yeah. All right. Without, if there's nothing else, we want to close it there. Everybody feel good. We got Ooh. what we want to say out. All right. So we're the change mentors. I'm Craig. This is Pat and Ann. And uh, we're going to see you next time. And we'll come up with another subject. It'll probably be around something in leadership. So yes. uh, we'll see you next week and we'll talk more about leadership. And Happy it's nice. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. That's right.